people said the children of Israel were fruitful, they increased abundantly, and they multiplied, waxing great and mighty. And because of that, the officials of the land decided to take a plan. Somebody say, take a plan. Take a plan. And the plan is to cause them, number one, to have a taskmaster. Taskmaster. Who is a taskmaster? A taskmaster is a spirit that monitors how much you spend. A taskmaster is a spirit that controls your freedom. What is a task? You are given a job. And there's a difference between working or doing a work and doing a job. When Americans say, I'm going for a job, it simply means you are going to do something you don't like, but you have to do it. The word job came out of the slavery's life. They called their life as jobs. You don't look for job, you look for work. What is a work? Something you like to do. I'm doing what I like to do. I like to minister and to people. So this is not a job for me, it's a work. And the Bible says, he that does not work should not eat. Which means it's God's perfect will that everybody will have some work to do. But it is not God's will that we do jobs. You should not be doing things you don't like to do. You are compelled to do it because circumstances have caused you to do it. So now the Israelites were not working. They were on jobs. And jobs are controlled by taskmasters. Because you don't like it, so they have to watch over you for you to do it by force. And then they task you, so you do the work in pain. Now, the Bible said they did it with rigor. That is set pressure. A person is supposed to work eight hours a day. Fine. But the working of the person should go, should, should be in sequence with the person's heartbeat. In Italy here, we have taskmasters. Why am I saying that? Because the machines we work with does not work according to the heartbeat of the people. A machine in a factory is supposed to work as slow as you can bring in five times before you switch, you, you, you swing an arm. But then the speed of the machines drains your strength. It's not, that's not a work. That is like destroying somebody's future. Mm -hmm. Making somebody overweight. Now, the funniest part is about the delivery buses. People thought the work was so hard, so now they will do a job called the, the postmaster's job, delivery of, um, of letters, of mails. Tell me about it. You call it Korea, right? So you take a van, and then you put letters inside, and you are to distribute it from house to house. Do you know that in Italy, they give you goods that you cannot finish delivery in a day. <laughs> you have maybe 25 house address to attend to, and the distances are so wide, and you must finish delivering 25 items in 25 homes under maybe four or five hours. Now, the one giving you the goods just know it's not possible, but they expect you to do. Some pastors resigned from job and thought they had an easy way around. But they end up driving, running, driving, running, to the extent that right now, even if DHL brings you a parcel, they don't knock at your door anymore. They paste the paper there and run away. Because if they calculate their time, the time they will wait for you to come, collect your goods, sign, it, they must minus it to somebody's house. So they are pasting their papers and then expect you to drive an, an hour or plus to go and collect your goods. In other words, they came, you were not around, but your buzzer didn't ring. How many of you are witness of that? This is craziness. This is what we call jobs. This is what we call taskmasters. But child of God, when things are like this, God chooses somebody to be responsible to intercede. 
there must be people praying to stop that act. Amen. We walked to Questura some years ago, poured oil in Questura, and stopped the act of people lining up, sleeping there because of documents. God heard us. Amen. In those days, there is nothing like appointment. Mm -hmm. You will wake up at midnight. Mm -hmm. So I went there with mid midnight to go and make a line to change to change that document or renew or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I when I got there, there was a church member that said, Mama, this is not possible. Go home and sleep. I will be in the line from 12 midnight. And you come back 8 in the morning so that I will give you the place I reserve for you. I felt like that's very nice. But is that person not having wife and children? So we, I slept in the car and we waited. That's how we used to do papers. We are going to sleep there. Mm -hmm. Then one day, I woke up in the morning and I heard the Lord repeating Isaiah 6, who shall I send? And who will go for me? I took oil, went to that pastor, pour oil that said, From today, you devil of affliction, it is to afflict our soul. Do you know what it is to be in a line in winter? Mm. In deep winter, even summer, Europe summer is chilly mm. at midnight. Mm -hmm. What did we do to deserve this kind of regal life? And God heard our prayers. Amen. Once again, we are going to pray. The situation must change from taskmaster job to work. Amen. Somebody should go to school, do a course, and be employed. You should go to work. You don't go for job. It's not by force. Amen. It's just too irritating. I heard somebody clapping. Thank you. Verse 10. Let us deal wisely with them. You want to underline that? Yes. Let us deal wisely with them. We are doing prayer. Let us deal wisely with them. So how to deal wisely with us is that now if you don't have a job, they can't renew your papers for you. They didn't give the job, but they expect you to be working. Is that not a wise way of dealing with us? just to frustrate somebody to leave. After learning how to speak Italian, we find our people now in Germany learning how to speak German. <laughs> Starting all over, can you imagine? They deal wisely. So open your eyes and see, they are dealing wisely with us. But did we come here by ourselves? No. The moment you start thinking you were smart enough to come to Italy, you lie. People died on the way coming. People were repatriated coming. It is because God has written it in his books. That's why you find your, yourself here. You are not here by yourself. You were chosen and appointed to be here. It has always been the dealings of God to my great people. There's something about God I'm yet to understand when I see him face to face. It is his perfect will that people move and migrate. Those he chooses to use, he takes them from their kindred. He does not let them stay among their people. Is that not what he did to Moses? Is that not what he did to Abraham? Is that not what he did to all of them? He said, come out from your father's house. And I will take you to a place where I will make you exceptional. Amen. So it is God's perfect will that you be in Italy. Oh, tell somebody you are not a mistake. <laughs> but whilst you are here, what do we do? You have to pray. You must take the land. You must decree the power of God over the atmosphere. Child of God, it is said in verse 12, the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied. And the enemy, an Italian government was grieved because the people were making it. Yes. They are going to be grieved in Jesus' name. Amen. They are going to be grieved in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you are going to rise up and you are going to pray 
O oh Lord, anoint my feet. Let my stay in Italy be a blessing. Yes. And how you are going to do it is I'm going to give you anointing oil. You are going to touch your feet with it. And you are going to say, once I step my feet in this land, I must prosper. Amen. And you are going to say, I decree and declare Amen. according to the promises of God that I must prosper in the foreign land. He did not say in your father's house, in the foreign land. You are not going to do a job. You will do a work. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready to pray? Yes. Please, go into prayer mode now. Because heavens have opened. And God is going to hear. And those who take this prayer serious will have results. Amen. Something good is about to happen to you. Amen. God is unfailing. Somebody will say, oh, but we prayed this last man. But we prayed this last two man. Let me tell you something about God. God expects you to pray, to seek. Keep seeking. Keep asking. Keep knocking. And anytime you pray, something happened. What did I say? Anytime you prayed, something happened. In the walls of Jericho, he told Israel, go round the wall. One day, just go once. Don't talk. Tell three people, don't talk. 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 What does it mean? Don't finish prayer and start babbling against God or things against Italy. Don't talk. He said, just go around once. Don't talk. Tomorrow, go again. Don't talk. Three days, I go again. Don't talk. Four days, I go again. Don't talk. Five days, I pray again. Don't talk. Six days, I pray again. Don't talk. On the seventh day, all you have to say is, thank you, Jesus. It is done. And it shall be done. Amen. I want you to touch somebody and say, look at the process to break through. Look at the process to break through. So those of you who said we prayed last week, we prayed last month, it didn't work because you talked. You just talked. In fact, you didn't even leave the church before you started talking. It's because I am in Italy. That is why you handle me like that. If, if, if not, if I were to be in Nigeria, eh? or if, if I were to be in America, you cannot talk to me like that. You have talked. The prayer did not work. Just forget it. Just forget it. Somebody, great seven people say, we are starting all over again. 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 God, we are starting all over again. Amen. Please forgive my people. Amen. They talk too much. Help us, Lord. As for today's prayer, when we finish, Lord, zip our mouth. No, we will zip our mouth. You don't zip it. You will zip it. Because when God chooses to zip it, we are in trouble. No, no, no. We don't want to be like uh, Zechariah, John the Baptist's father. God zipped his mouth. Why? Because he went and said, how can it be? An old man like me. And I saw an angel yesterday. The angel said I will have to keep. And it cannot. So God just zip the mouth. May God never zip your mouth. Oh. Amen. Let us zip our mouth ourselves. I say don't talk. Don't talk. Because listen. There is a power in our prayer. Amen. When you pray. First thing that happens is that the heavens open. They absorb the prayer. Number two, the heavens dispatches angels on duty for the prayer. Number three, they start shifting buttons, causing things to happen in people's places just for your sake. Amen. Just for your sake. Don't talk. And on the seventh day, the word seven means perfect, complete. When God has completed the operation, he is doing for you. He will now manifest the answer. And then you have a testimony. Yes. Don't talk. Don't talk. The devil is a liar. Yes. He has a way of agitating us. Mm -hmm. When I say don't talk, I am talking about my 
myself. I don't know what you did today or yesterday, but she knows. Oh man. When I get mad, I'm like, what did I come to do in this country? Hey, I'm going home. Is that not how I do? I said, yeah, 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 pack my tits, pack my tits. Look at them. Oh God, forgive me. Decided not to talk. I can see everything. I see everything. I see everything. Hey, I can see everything. Hey, I can see everything. See everything. Are you ready? They want to frustrate somebody, but it can never happen. You don't talk. What you have to do? Pray and pray and pray and pray. Listen, that prayer must be hot enough to the one who is supposed to sign will die. Another person will come. Don't talk because God is very powerful. Praise Master Jesus. The one who is coming to change the windows, he just came. He said, Listen, I've been to Africa. I've seen beautiful buildings. You see how somebody says shit. Shit. Oh, I said this year is a year of what? Supernatural shit. I told them from, I said this architect is not a correct one. We have to drop and take another one. He can't do the job. But when God brought another one, the person said, I've seen beautiful houses. He said, you don't, I, I said, I will help you. You don't need permit for window. I will change this window. Yeah. I will last see the window. Yeah. Don't talk. That day, that architect made me to feel like I should leave this country. There are things that the devil will do to you. Child of God, if you are not smart, you will see, not against people, but against God. Yeah. I was ready to sin against God. How ungrateful can I be? Couldn't I have remembered the good things God has done? Who in this Italy has been given a land? We are holding the first record. Ooh. But for the devil, he will make you forget the goodness of God. You will start murmuring, complaining, it is not your portion. Yeah. Child of God, lift up your hands. You say, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will answer you. You are going to pray. Go. And the blood shall be to you 
for a turkey upon the houses where they are. And when I see the flock, I will pass over you, and the place shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, and this day shall be unto you for a memorable a memorial, and ye shall give it a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. You shall keep it a feast by ordinance forever. Amen. Taking communion is a festival. These days, taking communion has become just one of those things. No. Communion day is a day you should come with joy. Why? Because what you can do, the blood of Jesus can do it for you. Yeah. The blood of Jesus is greater than A447. Yeah. The blood of Jesus is mightier than bazookas. Yes. The blood of Jesus is tremendous than atomic bomb. The blood of Jesus is able to cast down all imaginations. The blood of Jesus is an intercessor. The blood of Jesus will not judge you, he will defend you. Amen. Why the blood of Jesus is important for you right now? Because we know some of the afflictions we are going through is because of our sins. As we hear that the person in postural pressure right now, the lady is wild because a black woman took the husband. So if you are there, she is the one causing people not to even see her the tail of their document. But the black will defend the children of God. Yeah. As you go there with the blood of Jesus, that woman must favor you. Amen. This is the time you are going to use that blood to fight for you in every area of your life. The blood is healing you. The blood is reorganizing your life. The blood is giving you what your heart desires. Oh, what a precious blood. God himself said, Israel, before I can move you from one place to the other, before I can change your status from a slave man, a slave person, to a master of your own, I need to put the blood upon you. God is about to change somebody's status now. Yeah. As you begin to invoke the blood of Jesus over your life. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Anything gone wrong in my life? Anything 
is going to be a prayer like a teaching prayer. We pray very often. We pray all the time. And very often we even fast and pray. But you see, a hungry man is an angry man. Somebody can be fasting the whole week, but the person's character does not even meet up to the prayer. Because you are hungry, you are already angry. And a little thing, you flare up like flames of fire. No, it will not work like that with you. You need the water. Tell three people you need the water in your life. <laughs> Okay. If you didn't hear me, well, maybe you want us to go the American way. You need the water. Okay? You need the water. You need the water. Hello. You need the water. No, no, no. You didn't finish it. You need the water, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not talking. You need the water, man. You need the water. Anyone who does not bath will stink. Hello? take time to clean the armpits. We will suffer in doing that the back here. <laughs> there is something called roll up. Please buy it in summertime before you come so that I can have the back at the back way. Because some of you, when you do this, only God help you. Hello? Water is so important. As someone is thinking that you are holding your nose, so you are stinking the nose of God because you do not allow the word of God to clean you. I can't take time and be fasting and praying for money. No. When everything is in order, money must surely come. Yeah. I will fast and pray for character. Character. Because the water must wash you. You can never serve God without these three witnesses. Water blood and spirits so if you can speak in tongues if the spirit can use you from morning to tomorrow but the water have not washed you i am very sorry all your show did nothing it's not going to work john chapter 3 we are still on this subject john chapter 3 Nicodemus have come to Jesus Christ. Nicodemus is a lecturer. Hello? Hi. And his title is Reverend Doctor. Nicodemus is not just anybody. He is a learned intellectual man of God. He comes to Jesus to ask him, what can I do to enter into the kingdom? What can I do to be what I'm supposed to be? Then Jesus says, until you are washed, one, with the blood, two, with the spirit of God, three, with what? The water of the way. You're going nowhere. You aren't going nowhere. Okay, now verse three. Verse 3 of John 3. Everybody say John 3 3. John 3 3. I know everybody knows John 3 16, but nobody knows John 3 17. <laughs> Neither do you know John 3 15. But for John 3 16, you know. May God bless you. This one is even easier than John 3 16 because it's John 3 3. What did he say? Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Listen, I want you to tell five people, Please get born again. Please get born again. Please get born again. Please get born again. What is the meaning of born again? must go so that a new one from God will come. That's the meaning of born again. Born again doesn't mean taking off lipstick from your lips. Born again doesn't mean tying the turban so hard that your 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 veins will prop out in your face. <laughs> born again doesn't mean not using jewelry. 
stories like I am doing. Born again means born of the character of Jesus Christ. Lift up your hands to heaven. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I come to you. I come to you. Assist me Assist to inherit the kingdom. To inherit the kingdom. Among the least, Among the least. I, find I find myself wanting anger, anger. unforgiveness, unforgiveness. strife, hatred, hatred, adultery, adultery. fornication, fornication. envy. Be What again? I'm listing them. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Sanctify, me now. sanctify me now. Set me free now. Set me free now. Let me let go. Let me that let go. you will take over my life. Come on, open your mouth and begin to pray. I claim it. I, claim it. I, take it. I take it in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Last scripture, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 31. Sorry, Ephesians. Ephesians 4, 31. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Let's start from 30 so that you can have a better relationship with the Lord. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 and 31. This is our last scripture we are going to pray with and we go. Are you there with me? Yes. All of us go. And bring up the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all be covered and run and hunger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. 32. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Is that a powerful scripture? Yes. I, has the Lord ministered to you with this? Hmm? You see the microphone I'm preaching with? This is a gift from Josephine. She bought it as a gift how many years ago? Then now Josephine has done something I don't like. Can't I even remember a microphone? And say, because of what you did. In short, I'm making an announcement that don't forget to defeat the October. Amen, amen, amen. He said, showing kindness one to another. Do not let bitterness take over your heart. If not, you cannot see the glory of God. You need the glory of God, child of God. What is the glory of God? It's not cosmetics. Even though cosmetics can beautify a person, if the glory of God is not with you, when you paint your face, you will look like a monster. It's the glory of God that gives you favor. You are going to pray. Say after me, O Lord, sanctify my heart. Please, everyone, lift up your hands. I'm not joking. This is the last Sunday of June. We are going to enter into July. It is a month of power. It's a month that God must do something for you. He is willing to do it. He is willing to do it. God is willing to bless you. It's up to you to lift up your hands and open your heart. Say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me. Let 
your word wash me, make me clean, help me to drop bitterness, to drop wrath, the spirit of wrath. Wrath means anger beyond control. You see, listen, before we pray, everybody can be angry. But wrath is that now the anger has exploded in you, which means you are no more in the range of wrath, of, of, of anger. You are now in the range of what? Wrath. And wrath is hard to cool down. The people that operate in wrath, when the sun is setting, they still can't let go because they went too far. So it's 6 o'clock, you are still angry. Something happened 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it's 6 o'clock, you are sitting behind your food, you are still doing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for what? Let it go. God is with you. The spirit of wrath is a demon that robs people of the visitations of God. Angels are always with you. When you are wrath and the sun is setting, you are still angry, they withdraw. It makes the enemy attack you at night. Do not let the enemy take charge of your life. You are a child of God. Before anything happened to you, God was there. He will never forsake you. He will bring to pass what your heart desires. Don't talk. Lift up your hands. Last prayer. Now I'm going to watch you to pray for yourself. And you are going to pray for one another. Pray for the brother on your left, on your right. And say, Lord, help my brother, help my sister. Let it be well with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, pray your last prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Father, let your way be rich in the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray.